Okay, we have a new problem here with some more given information. We have two of them with f of x. We have one of them over here with uh, g of x. And we want to answer, the, uh, we're going to do five parts on this. We'll first start with these first three. Now for part A, I have this number and that number match. And what I know about integrals is if I have these numbers matching, then automatically we know the answer is going to be zero, nothing to work out. doesn't matter if I have f of x or g of x. These numbers are the same, automatically I'm going to get zero. For part B, I have 6 to 1, but I have 1 to 6, and also I need the 3 I need to get rid of. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to move the 3 out front, and that's going to allow me to get f of x dx by itself. However, if I just move the 3 out as is, I'm still going to be left with 6 to 1. So I want to change it to 1 to 6 here, because that, that way I know what number goes in for that. So what I can do is I'm going to put a negative on the outside, that's going to allow me to change this back into 1 to 6. So I move the 3 out front and apply the negative. That allows me now to plug in a number for this. So from 1 to 6, f of x dx, I know that's exactly equal to 5. Therefore, negative 15 here is going to be the answer for part B. Now, for part C, what I have to do is this is going to involve the property where I break the limits up into two different things. So what I know about this is if I go from 1 to 3 and then 1 to 6, I know that I'll, I'll basically be adding those together and I can get the integral all the way across. Now, I don't want 1 to 6, I want 3 to 6. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write this as the integral from 1 to 6 f of x dx. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the integral from 1 to 3 f of x dx. So it's a, it's a modification of that one property we talked about. You can break the limits up any way that you want to, but if I go from 1 to 6 and take that whole entire area, but I remove the area from 1 to 3, that's going to leave me with 3 to 6 left over. The, uh, the logic for that is you can go from 1 to 3 and then from 3 to 6, that's going to get you the whole entire interval. So, so basically if I take this and I move it across the equal sign, I'll basically get the same property I had before. So all I'm doing is using that property, moving this over to here, it's subtraction. So now I'm just going to plug in the numbers for that. 1 to 6 of f of x dx is 5. And I'm subtracting the 1 from 1 to 3, which is negative 2. So 5 minus negative 2, that's going to give me 7 as my final answer. So now let's take a look at part D and E. Okay, now for D and E, for part D, I have f of x minus g of x. What I want to do first is separate this and we're going to break it up. So we're going to do first, we'll do the integral from 6 to 1 of f of x minus integral 6 to 1 of g of x. And of course, I'm, don't forget to put your dx into each one of those. So now I have this written correctly. So I have dx for each one and I have a minus. Now, I don't have 6 to 1, I have 1 to 6, so once again, if I want to change that, I'm going to just put a negative sign out front so I can change that back over into something where I can get the numbers exactly. If I change this one, that's going to change that outside one to a plus, so I'm putting a negative out front there. That changes this back to 1 to 6 of g of x dx, and now it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers for each one. I have a negative, this f of x there, that's 5. I have plus this one right here, adding 7 to it, so I get positive 2 as the answer for part D. Now this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to split this one up also. This one I'm going to put negative 2 out front. I have 1 to 6 of f of x, and then plus 1 to 6 g of x dx. I'm doing that so that way I can get these individually. Now this is 1 to 6. I don't have to do the same thing I did for part D because the order is correct. So now I can just plug the numbers in directly from what I'm given there. So I have negative 2 times this one, which is going to be negative 2 times 5. And then I'm adding this one here, which is going to be 7. Negative 10 plus 7 will give us negative 3. And that will be your final answer for part E.